In this video, I unbox and install my new rotary lift to post uh, 10K hoist that I got uh, recently. Uh, I ordered it through a local rep. I contacted Rotary and they gave me my, my closest representative and that allowed me to customize the lift to exactly how I wanted it and got the same good value and pricing that I would have got online, um, but I got exactly what I wanted. I ordered it with two foot height extensions for a little bit higher overhead clearance, uh, as well as the three stage arms, which are very heavy duty and the same arms they use on their 12K models. Uh, so that I feel comfortable with a big pickup or a super duty or a three, you know, a one ton pickup on there without worrying about arm deflection and the lift being able to handle it. I was very happy with this um, quality of the build of this rotary lift. Here I'm just showing you everything's nicely packaged, came with very thorough instructions, and um, all the bolts are uh, labeled for exactly where they need to be installed. It comes with the parts manual, installation manual, and maintenance manuals. Um, here I'm pulling out the, the large three-stage arms that give you a lot of versatility on the hoist um, to suit your bay and the vehicle that you have on there. I also ordered it with truck adapters and also got some car adapters as well. And here I'm just showing you that this is uh, a very well-built, strong, you know, um, durable product, very good quality build. I laid, uh, I brought a pickup in there and kind of laid out the shop and marked where the wheels were, the center of the vehicle, the front and the back, but really the instructions are very thorough and tell you where you need to bolt the columns down so that uh, you have full use of the lift. And uh, so that was very helpful to know how I needed to set those up and lay it out in my bay. And they ended up working perfectly after we got all done. They fit up nicely to, um, you know, a large pickup in the shop. Here they have you install the column extensions first. I, I installed these a little short. I didn't put them in the correct holes. And when I installed the equalizing cables later, I realized that uh, we realized that the uh, cables were a little bit long, so we had to raise the extensions up uh, another hole so that those came to the correct place and the cables were right for the extensions that we ordered. There's also um, a little latch cable guides there that go in and then the overhead assembly brackets that you put on now as well. And then we squared up the, the bay, to, um, the garage door to the wall and our lines so that uh, we got a a centered shot coming in through the garage door so we're centered coming in the hoist is centered with the door and then we measured all of our positions according to the instructions of where the columns were going to sit and we used a floor jack to maneuver them and to uh, set them in place and then we just stood them up and uh, between the two of us we could get them to where they needed to go I ordered a set of horseshoe shims. The ones that came with it uh, didn't have as many options and thicknesses. And so I had another set that I bought that gave us some more versatility to get it sitting exactly how we wanted. And then we're just throwing one um, anchor bolt in each column. And we'll use that uh, to, to stabilize it while we assemble the overhead assembly and whatnot before we anchor it down. And this will allow us to maneuver it. Uh, still, if we don't tighten it down to level it and raise and lower it as we need to and get it um, lined up with the other column on the other side. And take another measurement here after we get this on our marks and make sure that we got our inside to inside dimensions correct. We like where it's at, so we'll go ahead and punch a hole in this one as well. We noticed that when we stood them up, um, these bolts with the weight of, of raising them kind of made the extensions become a little squampus from the, the base area and so we just loosened the bolts and realigned those and made sure that they were in line with the the rest of the column and then here we kind of 
guess and get this to about the right spot. Don't know exactly which hole it will be, but we just slide those into one another and then start working on the stop bar and switch box that go into the overhead assembly for the safety cutoff. We got these in the wrong hole too, and when we got it up in the air and got it all set, we moved the whole switch bar and, and uh, box switch box um, into a new hole so that it was centered correctly. So we're basically putting these in just loose for now in the right position and then we're going to go back down and uh, level our towers or our columns. We used a transit to make sure that both columns were um, at the same height so that when we have the arms uh, turned out and touching each other in the middle that they're they're equal with each other and you'll see what I mean here in just a minute but we went ahead and raised um, the column lowered them as we needed on each side so that they're sitting exactly with each other um, you're not supposed to have more than a half inch of, of shims in any one place um, but we were in spec this floor did have a, a little bit of slope with it um, for draining which wasn't a problem using the horseshoe shims to, to get them leveled out we're going to go in and head and install the arm pins on two of the arms and uh, and then the arm restraint gears there we're just temporarily setting in place and then this lines up that tells us that what we did on the transit and our leveling job uh, worked out right we're going to go ahead and mount the power unit now And it goes on the passenger side so that as you get out of the vehicle you can set the arms on the driver's side and then walk around the vehicle set the arms on that side and then you're in the right position to raise and lower the um, the lift i'm going to start running hydraulic lines first one's the short one down to the bottom of the cylinder there on the same side the power unit's on route the the hoses and install the little retainers. Next we'll start routing the long line over to the other side which we ended up routing this incorrectly uh, and we realized that when we um, ran the equalizer cables we basically just didn't read the instructions good enough here we just kind of made some assumptions so we, we run it here underneath and then that top overhead assembly and it needs to go on top of that everything there. Next we route the equalizer cables. They'll grab the uh, underside of the carriage on one side. Uh, it'll poke up through the, un you know, around the bottom pulley and then into the bottom side of the carriage there. And then the other end will go around the other side of the pulley all the way up over the overhead assembly and down to the top of the other carriage on the other side. And there's two of those, and those help keep equal pressure as the lift is raising um, so that it lifts level, and those cables make that possible. And you can raise and lower the, the carriage to get it in the right place. And uh, this is where we had realized that we had those two foot extensions in the wrong spot and we, we raised those, but I don't have that on video. We rerouted our hydraulic lines to where they're supposed to go and uh, sent them down towards the power unit. This is running the second equalizer cable. I don't have video of it, but there is instructions and a method for ensuring that you have the correct equalizer cable tension. Um, after you get it all set up and installed. Now have all of our hydraulic lines hooked up and our equalizer cables in. We've got our hoses routed where they're supposed to be. Final hook up there. We're going to go ahead and tighten the overhead assembly stuff. Uh, we push this up a little bit past level so that we had clearance here with that equalizer cable so it wasn't tinging and rattling um, as you're using it and as those cables travel. Next you have the uh, the latch cable uh, little sheaves there for the lockout mechanism and then there's a pulley you install on each side 
there's two positions on each side for the pulleys. On the side next to the power unit, you want it to go to the upper pulley. You install a pulley on the upper little bar that's provided there, and on the other side, you install a pulley on the on the bottom bar that's provided, and that way it, it pulls down on the one side and pulls up on the other so that, that basically so the latching mechanism works and it pulls. So here, this is the bottom side on the non-power unit is where that pulley goes, and that'll pull out on the locking mechanism here by pulling down on it. And on the other side, you put the pulley on top, um, which you'll see here in a minute. We get the cable generally to the right length and um, slip it over the locking mechanism on the non-power unit side. And here you can see the pulleys above the locking mechanism on the other side and because uh, the, the cable doesn't release the latch on this side, the lever does, and then the cable releases the latch on the other side. And we'll tighten this up to where it's not retracting the lock, but it's tight enough that it will when you pull the lever. And then cut it off to length. Now we're going to install um, all the arms and the arm restraint gears. You slide the pin up from the bottom. And then the instructions for your type of lift tell you where you need to position those uh, restraint gears and which bolt holes to install the bolts into and the torque specs for those. So now we fill it full of hydraulic fluid, raise it up. It's going to have a ton of air in it right now as it fills those lines and those cylinders. So on top of the, the cylinder there, there's a bleeder port that you unscrew a couple of turns. And we repeated this process a few times until we got all the air out. Right now we just have this generically hooked up to power. We don't have official power ran, and then this video shows that we do. This has the power ran down to the, the unit, um, and then up to a, a junction block that we put in, and then to our power source. It also goes into the cutoff switch box on the overhead assembly so that um, you know when we tested it, you can push up that overhead bar and it cuts power to the power unit and that prevents damage to the vehicle or the lift itself. Uh, first vehicle I lifted was a sedan to give it a try. Uh, the arms were nice and low profile and went under without any problem. Setting the vehicle on the locks and they're engaging simultaneously and working the way they should. And uh, get under access. And then raise it up off the locks and uh, the lock mechanism was releasing as it should. This is a Super Duty F-250 diesel pickup that it lifted. Didn't notice any arm deflection. Uh, very sturdy. This is a Sierra 1500, um, a dump truck uh, that was pretty heavy. And you can see the combination of truck adapters to get where we needed to engage things. And uh, very sturdy. It didn't feel nervous under this at all. Also installed the door protectors and the brackets for holding the car and truck adapters. I hope you found this useful if you're shopping and I uh, hope you like and subscribe.